guys look cute. Is there is no anti-venom. What's up and welcome back everybody. On today's video, it is insane. We have 25 new venomous snakes. Go ahead and show them. Yeah, look at that son. Guys, so you know, this right here is my venomous snake collection. It takes up a very, very small portion of the room. I didn't know how many snakes I could be able to fit in here, but Robert, turn around and show them how many we can fit. This right here is 25 new venomous snakes. I wanna give a huge shout out to Tyler Nolan for trusting me with all of his babies. Now these snakes are gonna stay here for about a month until Tyler gets his hard copy permit. But until Tyler gets his permit, these snakes will be living with me, living like royalty. They'll be being fed every single week, cleaned, clean water, everything. These snakes are gonna live like kings, let me tell you. So let's do a quick little tour for those of you who don't know what Tyler has. This right here is the blue Insularis. Now, not just one blue Insularis, but five blue Insularis. If you look back there in that top right corner, you'll see a bunch of little blue Insularis. There's a couple in the backdrop, but we have five, blue, not just five, six blue Insularis. There's another one right down here. This one right here is actually a big, big, I don't know what, I don't know if it's a male or a female, I couldn't tell you. Look at that. This is the sixth one, so beautiful. But we don't just have blue Insularis, we have King Cobras, we have hybrid rattlesnakes, we have puff adders, we have spinning cobras. <laughs> oh, do that again. We have spinning cobras. Now you guys know, one of the most favorite snakes in my collection is Oreo, my black and white spinning cobra. Now I don't just have Oreo, but I have three adults, which are much more bigger than him. We have one over here. We have one in this cage. He loves to spit. Robert, if you back up, you'll see all of that venom. This right here is venom just dripping down on that cage. Highly toxic, highly venomous snake. And when a snake like this spits venom all over the glass, what happens is it dries and it aromatizes. When it aromatizes, people like me come in here, they breathe in that venom and they'll develop an allergic reaction. So we don't want these spitters in here too long, but look, I'm a man. I can take a little bit of venom. I can take a little bit of venom, maybe. Let's go. On with the tour, we have the pearl Chinese cobras. Now, the reason they call them pearls is because when these guys are adults, they turn into a more pearl color. Now, they're born with a lot of beiges, a lot of brown, but as this snake ages, they'll almost get a solid white. And we don't just have one of those, but we have a pair. We have two. We have that guy up top. And we have this guy down below. This is another pearl, Naja Atra, which is a Chinese cobra, a highly venomous cobra species. Oh, and if you watch Tyler Nolan, you know this girl right here. This right here is Shativ. She's Tyler Nolan's most aggressive king cobra. Now she's, I'd say about seven to eight feet long. She's getting on some size, which Rusty is also doing as well. Rusty is down here. Now he's deep in shed, but this right here, I'd say is about a nine to 10 foot long King Cobra. And Tyler has raised this guy from a little tiny hatchling. It is amazing to see a King Cobra grow up from just a little guy to a thick 10 foot long King Cobra. It's absolutely insane. All right, now this right here probably takes the cake for my favorite snake in Tyler Nolan's collection, AKA my collection for about a month. <laughs> but this right here is Kilo. Kilo is a leucistic monocled cobra. Let's see if we can get Kilo out for you guys. All right, guys, this right here is Kilo. Kilo is a leucistic monocled cobra. Now, you guys may think I have a leucistic, but I actually have two albinos. Now, albinos are more of a pinkish color, but leucistic are a solid white with either black or red eyes. Woo! <laughs> now, this right here, I believe, is the Jawless line, which is the line that has black eyes. Now, this is actually my most favorite line out of all the leucistic monocled cobras with Blizzard being my least favorite because they have red eyes. But if you guys look at Kilo, man, is he a beautiful snake. <laughs> look at that cobra. Now he is not a small monocled cobra. Kilo is definitely a thick body boy, if you might ask me. But he is in shed, so you don't wanna handle him too much because when snakes are in shed, because when snakes are in shed, they could be a little bit more feisty than snakes that aren't in shed. Now, when they're in shed, they basically can't see. So instead of the snake relying on your movement to bite you, he's just gonna blindly strike. So if a snake is in shed, you don't want them to blindly strike because that 
is when they will bite you. If you can predict a snake's movements, that is one of the best things because then you can handle them. Look at that. Kilo, my most favorite monocled cobra I have ever seen. Now, the first time I laid eyes on Kilo was just a few years ago, and I knew he was a very, very special cobra. Now, he hoods up pretty dang good, but he also is a really docile snake. So this guy right here, you don't have to worry about too much. He's nothing like my pastel monocle cobra. Look at that. Whew. Such a beautiful snake. Now we just moved all these snakes. They've been double bagged, boxed, and moved all the way to Fort Pierce, to Palm Beach County. So we don't want to interact with these guys too much. We'll put them back and we'll let them be. All right guys, the next snake we're about to see is my hands down favorite snake in the entire world. The only reason why I don't have one is because I can't afford one. But the snake that is my favorite is the Mangsheng Viper. Now, as you can see, I even bought a Mangsheng Viper hook just for this occasion. All right, guys, so the snake we're about to see right now is Tyler's male Mangsheng Viper. Now, if you look right here, it says 1.0. That's how I can tell this is a male. Now, the reason you remember male between female is males always come first in the snake world. That's why they're before the dot. Females are always after the dot. So if I look at this, it says 1.0, then I know it's a male. If it said 0.1, then it would be a female. And you can see this Mangsheng Viper just shedded. She's got her shed, or I should say his shed right there. This Mangsheng Viper is actually native to the mountains of China. Now in these mountain ranges, it's actually very, very cold. That's why these snakes are so hard to keep in captivity. Now my snake room isn't too hot on average, so it's actually a good place for these Mangsheng Vipers but these vipers are lightning fast. This is not a snake you want to free handle. This is not a snake you want to play any games with. I've seen these guys strike so extremely fast. It's insane. But I just want to pull this guy out for one second just to give you guys a little look at him and so I can remove his shed out of this enclosure. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Robert, please do me a favor and just zoom in on the head of that snake so these viewers can see how absolutely beautiful this snake is. Now, a lot of you know, I love hunting, I love fishing. One of my most favorite things is camo. And this snake right here is the only snake that is a true camo snake. Now look at that pattern. Look at that camouflage. Could you imagine finding this snake up in a mountain range? It would be almost impossible to find this snake in the wild. Look at that. This right here is the Mangsheng Viper. Now you guys can see, this guy's only around three and a half to four feet long, but these Mangsheng Vipers get absolutely huge. This guy is gonna get anywhere from eight to nine feet long, and if it's a female, almost 10 feet long. Look at that, so beautiful. What a better hook to use with the Mangsheng Viper than the Mangsheng Viper hook. Now you guys better get ready because we will be producing our own snake hooks very soon. So don't buy any snake hooks on the market, wait, We'll have the best ones. Look at how the tip of his tail is solid green, probably used for coddling prey in the Chinese mountains. Dude, Robert, what do you think? Crazy it's snake, crazy right? Snake. Like it's insane. The colors are so beautiful. Nothing crazy. competes to this snake. There is not a single snake in the world that looks remotely close to this Mangshan Viper. Absolutely beautiful. Now you wanna be very, very careful when handling this guy. I actually have a video of Tyler handling these guys when they were smaller and they were lightning fast and they were striking at him left and right. Look at this guys, beautiful. The Mangsheng Viper. One of the most rare but beautiful species of Viper in the world. Look at that pattern. My hands down favorite venomous snake. <laughs> Tyler, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity just to work with these snakes and take care of them. Now keeping snakes for other people is a great way to learn different species. Now, instead of buying your own venomous snake, you can work with some of your friends. And that's how you kind of get a key for the husbandry and handling for a specific species of snake. Now, once I've kept the Mangsheng Vipers for a little bit of time, you kind of see how their temperament is, see how they eat, see how they move, see what kind of temperatures they move best at, and that is how you keep a snake the best way. Crazy, bro, oh my gosh. Get this shed out of his cage and we'll lock it on up. Then you have to be extremely careful. Even a four foot long Mangsheng Viper like this has a strike range of over three feet. Woo! Working with a snake like that will definitely get you sweating. And another key important note to mention when working with this snake is there is no anti-venom. So if you get bit by this species, they're gonna administer something close, but you will never have an anti-venom that will work for this species of snake, at least not yet. 
All right, guys, now this next snake we're about to pull out is the Pearl Naja Atra, which is a Chinese cobra. Now, Tyler, luckily enough, has a lot of pairs of these snakes, so we don't really have to take every snake out. We're just gonna take the snakes out that we feel need a cleaning or need to be serviced right now. Now, this Naja Atra has a little bit of poop in the back of the cage, so we're gonna go ahead and clean her up. All right, this right here is actually a beautiful species. Tyler actually offered me this pair, but I couldn't afford them at the time, but look, hey, now I got them anyways, baby, what's up? <laughs> All right, you wanna be extremely careful. Now, Naja is not a snake you wanna mess with, whether it's a Naja Atra, a Naja Naja, a Naja Kathal, all of the Naja species are absolutely deadly. Now let's see if we can get this pearl cobra out so we can service her cage. Now, just like my monocle that's het for blizzard, she has almost the same Chinese cobra markings on her. All right, guys. Whew. Look at that. Naja Atra out of the cage. This right here is a super fiery snake. Now, right now, you can see she's a super, super light beige, light brown. But they call this snake the pearl morph for a reason. Because when these guys are adults, they basically look like a pearl. Not a solid white, but a pretty washed out white that has the same resemblance of an actual pearl. Look at that, guys. Look at the white banding going down her back. Now, that's exactly what I was talking about on my albino monocle. He's kind of got the same markings, but he's not the same species. Now, they're found in the same continent, but not the same place. These guys are actually different than a monocle cobra. But the venom is just as bad. Let me tell you right now, if you get bit by this thing, you will die and you will die fast. All right, the pearl cobra's cage is nice and clean. Let's get her back in. Ooh, doggy. Ooh, do little spin, do little spin. Right in there, mama. Absolutely beautiful. I'll tell you what, I definitely got to get one of these guys by the time I'm done collecting. Whew. Robert, come look at this cobra. Such a beautiful species. All right, guys, let's go from China to Africa. The next snake we're going to see is a puff adder, one of the fastest striking snakes, if not the fastest striking snake in the world. All right, guys, these puff adders right here are downright deadly. Now, this snake will kill you just like the Naja Atra, but in a different way. Now these guys have a crazy, crazy cytotoxic venom and they will uh, destroy you very, very fast. Now this snake is in the Bittus family, so it is the same as rhino vipers and gaboon vipers. If you look at this snake, you can kind of tell because he's got a super big head and a short, thick body. So when you see a snake like this, you can kind of tell they're a Bittus without even looking. Like I said, a puff adder is not a snake you really want to tail. Now they're so fast, They'll turn around and they'll bite their tail in 0.2 seconds faster than you can react. Now we want to hook him on his first third. Go ahead and balance him. Get him straight to the floor because this species, they will just jump right off the hook and they'll actually break a couple ribs if they hit the floor too fast. But you can see how much of a thick body fat snake this is. Now if you guys watch my videos a lot, you'll actually see we've done a video with two of these snakes. We were at Chandler's house and we actually did clean the puff adders. But you can see this is actually the more dull one out of the two Tyler Nolan has, but he's nonetheless a beautiful puff adder. And these snakes are notorious for moving like a caterpillar. When they move on the floor, they'll actually move without going side to side, and they'll just shift their scales back and forth like a little caterpillar, and they'll move in a direct straight line. Such a beautiful snake. Now, I am in love, and I am so eager to work with new snakes. Now, every time I get a new snake, I do tons of research. I try to learn as much as I possibly can about each and every animal I keep. So now that I have all these new species, I am learning so much about all these different animals. Now, there's a couple different localities of puff adders. This right here is actually the Tanzania locale, which is one of the most beautiful locales of puff adders in the world. Let's get this big mama puff adder back in her cage. Wow, man. I just can't thank Tyler enough for giving me the opportunity to work with all these different species I've never got the chance to personally own. Puff adders, mansion vipers, king cobras, like, dude, we got two king cobras right here, right now. We have hybrid rattlesnakes. Now, don't even get me started on the hybrids. A lot of people don't like hybrids. Me, personally, I love hybrids. If you could take two species that would naturally breed in the wild and make something unique, make something new, I am all for it. So I do love hybrids. Shout out to all the guys out there who love keeping hybrids. All right, now, I would take out the spitter, but I don't want to get spit on. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to spit. Come on, you guys you guys seen Oreo. Look, he's right over here. Look at him. He hoods up good. He's a beautiful snake. There's no reason to take a spitter out of the cage if they spit. You know what I mean? Just leave him in the cage. If it's clean, 
Keep him in the cage. <laughs> no video with Tyler Nolan snakes would be complete without pulling out either Batman or Robin, his hybrid rattlesnakes. Now these guys are actually a hybrid between a Crotalus heritus, which is a canebrake, and a Crotalus edimentus, which is an Eastern Diamondback. Two snakes that you'll actually find here native in Florida. So if you think about it, if you're walking out in the woods, during the day or at night, you could see a species just like this. Now these hybrids have been known to be found wild in the Florida swamps. Ryan Tyler's got these shitty locks. All right guys, so you know the female was bitten by the male, so we're not really gonna film with her too much. We're actually just gonna use the male, but we do need to remove her because as you can see, there's a, as Chandler would say, a spicy meatball right in that corner. So we do need to get that out ASAP. We don't want any poop in any of these enclosures. When poop sits in an enclosure, it creates ammonia, and ammonia will create a respiratory infection. That's why it's so important to get the poop out of the cage as fast as you possibly can. All right, so this is a super long species of rattlesnake, so you want a super long hook. If you got a short snake, use a short hook. Long snake, use a long hook. It's pretty simple. Dude, just bending your hook. <laughs> <laughs> He's bending my hook. He's bending my rod, son. Now, a snake like this, you really don't want to use a hook unless you really have to. But when there's two snakes in the enclosure, you wanna make sure you're always watching the other species. Now I can see that female back there, right there. So I'm gonna come back by this glass and I'm just gonna, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh Look at the size of this rattlesnake. This right here is a huge rattlesnake. Now that's one thing about hybrids, whether it's a liger or a hybrid rattlesnake, they always get bigger than the normals. Guys, look at this snake. Robert, try to get a good YouTube thumbnail. Oh, he's huge. He's absolutely huge. Tyler, I got your snake. Come get your snake, buddy. I got your snakes. They're having a good time over here at Stones World. Tyler's probably like, what the hell? Don't put him on your neck like that. But look at that. Let me see that belly. My belly? Oh, the snake's <laughs> belly. <laughs> yeah, as you guys can see, uh, I've been gaining the belly just like this snake. You know what I mean? I'm a dad now. I got a dad bod. I got a belly, but guess what? I still got two guns, baby. You know what I'm saying? Now this right here is a very, very docile species of rattlesnake, but you don't want to take any risk when it comes to an animal with this size. Now, if you look at his venom glands, they're absolutely huge. Even if it's not the most potent venom, if you get hit with a load like this, you could die. Look at this rattle. I mean, it's half the size of my head, dude. Ugh. All right, guys, I'm gonna put this bad boy away. We'll remove the female. We'll see you in two seconds. Y'all wanna see a rattlesnake? This is my pet. I'm raising since he was a baby. Chick All right, guys, we got this cage all nice and clean. Did a little spot clean, it wasn't bad. So we're gonna go ahead and put this behemoth of a rattlesnake back in his cage. Come on, darling. Right back in there with your girlfriend. Robert, step back and just show how big this snake is. Look at how big this freaking snake is, bro. <laughs> It's huge. Oh my God. Any opportunity to work with a big, massive, giant, beautiful snake like this is an opportunity I won't miss. All right. Now you want to be very, very careful with these rattlesnakes because look, he's got about 20 rattles on there. That's 20 times of shedding and not breaking it off. If I break off that rattle, Tyler's going to be pissed. I ain't going to break off that rattle. Don't worry. That is the end of today's video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, if you enjoyed seeing all these snakes, seeing me and my collection, don't forget, most important part, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll see you on the next one.